morning, everybody. Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Monday here on this show, and you know what that means. Lots to talk about today. It is the fallout from WWE WrestleMania Backlash. We'll talk about that show here today. I got a lot to say about the show. but there are, Actually, it's weird. There's not a lot that happened on the show. But I got a lot to say about it, which is good because it's a radio program. So we'll talk about WrestleMania Backlash. We'll talk about the future of Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns made a very cryptic comment over the weekend. I got a lot of people wondering what the hell's going on with Roman Reigns. Well, the answer is not much. Less, actually, than... Uh, than even just very recently. So we'll talk about that. We got a uh, match scheduled for NXT 2.0 tomorrow. Bret Hart talks about AEW. Would he want to come in and do anything for AEW if he's allowed to do so? We got updates on Tammy Sitch, who was in fact arrested, but has already been bailed out. Nick Wayne will get his dream match. Imagine being 16 years old and getting your dream match. He'll be facing Will Ospreay on June 19th. We've also got the SmackDown report, the Rampage report, the Owen Hart tournament, and plenty more. We'll take your feedback today. As always, 425-780-7566 is the text message line. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter and, of course, Mike Sempervivi will join us, as always, here on the program. So a lot to get into here today. Hello to all of our Twitch homies, top-tier YouTube subscribers. We'll be heading back here after the break to talk about everything. Back in a moment here, Wrestling Observer Live. Yes, Mike is back here today. Hopefully in one piece, not too much poorer. No, no not too bad. Okay. Just got the estimate, though. It's about $1,500 worth of damage, so... Dude, I once ran over an opossum on uh, I-405. Not even like in the middle of a, a, a like a backwoods road or something like that. Right on 405. Man, I smashed that poor little bugger. And uh, I feel like it was probably more than that for that, that repair. He did a number on my purple Kia, if I recall correctly. <laughs> probably did me a favor. Hey, before we get going to the news, should mention, if you go to f4wonline.com slash Vegas, our annual convention is coming up here in just a few weeks, uh, May 28th weekend, Memorial Day weekend, in Vegas, in association, shouldn't say in association, now everyone's going to freak out, but uh, we used to do, we used to do uh, the conventions in association with WrestleMania, now we're doing them in association with Actually, it was UFC for a while. UFC on July 4th, wasn't yep, it? Or we had, then? Well, first it was Memorial Day weekend UFCs, and then we changed it. Uh, we've done a lot of things around WrestleMania weekend. Now, double or nothing in Vegas over Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we do have some packages available. Uh, there is a Q&A with Dave and I, which is taking place on Saturday at the Silver Nugget Casino. I was trying to get the gold nugget, but it wasn't available. So the Silver Nugget Casino, uh, you can grab your uh, Q&A tickets to that. There's a few left. Looks like uh, 30 bucks for the Q&A only. That's what we've got remaining. Ed's also running a show. If you want to go to Ed's show, uh, there's some tickets available for that. Can't believe they're charging more than for our Q&A. That's another matter entirely. <laughs> Uh, the most expensive uh, non-wrestling ticket is the group dinner to Texas Day Brazil, which I will be there for, and uh, I will get my eighty-three dollars worth. That includes the uh, the dinner and the dessert and the everything else. So uh, that's available. What's the dessert? Do they skimp onto the dessert no, and just they give you something smaller? They or? got some dessert gimmick they've got. And then there's also uh, a few tickets left. We have a combo package. You could actually get a ticket to AEW and a ticket to the Q&A. And I think there's only like two of those left. So if you want one, you better go up uh, very quickly. But once again, if you want to join us in Vegas, I'm going to be there. Dave's going to be there. I don't know who else is going to be there. Andrew's going to be there. I know that. But I don't know about Vinny. I actually don't know if Vinny's going or not. I think he might be going. I should probably ask him. But anyway, 
I'm the last to know all of this stuff. But I do know F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Whatever's left, go up there and get it right now. And uh, I will tell you one thing about the conventions in Vegas. I can guarantee one thing. What's that? You won't have a bad time. <laughs> it's impossible. Are you impossible. going to guarantee that? It doesn't need to be guaranteed. <laughs> You're going to a wrestling convention in Las Vegas with a bunch of other wrestling geeks. Of course, you're not going to have a bad time. All right, uh, we'll get to the pay-per-view here in a second. But first off, Roman Reigns made a cryptic comment over the weekend. He was at a house show in Trenton, New Jersey Saturday. He said he's, quote, starting to work into a new phase in his career and does not know if he will be back in Trenton again. And, of course, it's got everybody talking. You know, is this a health issue? Is he going to Hollywood? Is he, like, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> and, of course, let me tell you something. If you watch WWE and you watch that pay-per-view last night, brother, God forbid, I mean, personally for Roman Reigns, but professionally as well, if this guy goes down for any reason, holy smokes. This entire company is 1,000% built on Roman Reigns. And that pay-per-view last night, they did nothing, as we'll get to, to even set up a challenger. Forget a successor. We don't even have a challenger for this guy. But I'll get into that. But anyway, the situation is he signed a very lucrative new deal and uh, less, less dates. He's not going to be doing a lot of house shows. And uh, it doesn't appear there's going to be a lot of pay-per-views in uh, Trenton, New Jersey anytime soon. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the story there. Nothing to uh, nothing to panic about unless you like to buy house show tickets to see Roman Reigns, and you're probably in trouble. But uh, that's the update there. Yeah, people kind of lost their mind about it, and I don't know if that's because they just saw it on Twitter or whatever it was and then didn't see the actual clip of him talking, but it certainly seemed like... If you're around Trenton, you're just going to have to drive to Philadelphia or New York now because he's not doing all of these dates everywhere. But he's certainly not going anywhere either. And there was nothing about what he said that made it indicate that he was going to be, you know, had one foot out the door or anything like that. So I think people just took it and ran with it for a little while on Saturday, I guess it was. Well, hey, listen, I know, especially on the chat here, some people are thinking this story is overblown. But uh, let me tell you something. You know who I heard most of this from was not fans, and it was not Twitter, but it was people in WWE. Like, they were like, what is he talking about? What's going on here? There was concern about this because they didn't know what was going on either because when it comes to Roman Reigns and also Brock Lesnar, and really because of the way that they change plans all the time, no one there has any idea what's going on. Like, you know, what's going on with Roman? What's going on with Brock? Nobody ever knows anything. I mean, they, you know, you can work there. You can be on the card. You can be on the card in a big match and not have any idea what's going on with Roman Reigns and the main event and anything like that because they're they're pretty private about a lot of those things. So, yeah, Roman Reigns coming out and saying he's entering a new phase of his career and he might not see these fans ever again. Yeah, there were people talking about it like, what the hell's going on? Well, that is what the hell's going on. So uh, he's not leaving, nothing like that. But uh, it was not done to, like, you know, get people talking or sell house show tickets or anything like that. It was just, you know, the guy is appreciative of his fans. He is appreciative of the people that come and buy their tickets. And so he actually is not sure he's ever going to wrestle in Trenton again. So he went out there and he essentially said, you know, if I never see you again, I want to thank you, etc. So that's the story. That does lead us to the pay-per-view. And the main event was Roman Reigns and the Usos against Drew McIntyre and RK Bro. No titles on the line. They do the match. It's an excellent six man tag. Bunch of great workers. And uh, Roman Reigns pin Riddle. I was flabbergasted. I know. Why were you flabbergasted, Brian? Well, I was flabbergasted. Because, bro. They had, when they announced this pay-per-view, all everybody asked was, what do they have for Roman Reigns? Oh, nothing. Well, they'll probably shoot some angle with Drew McIntyre. Well, they shot an angle with Drew McIntyre to put him in a six-man tag. They 
false advertised for weeks to sell tickets, a unification match, which they had no plans to deliver because from day one it was never going to be a unification match. There isn't going to be a unification match. And so now we've got Hell in a Cell coming up. And who are our challengers for Roman Reigns? Oh, Nakamura? Well, they shot two angles with Nakamura. One of them led to Nakamura getting his ass kicked. The other one led to Nakamura getting beaten by Sami Zayn via countout on SmackDown. So it ain't going to be Nakamura. And if it is there, who cares? Drew McIntyre. I mean, at the very least, Drew could have pinned Roman Reigns, but he didn't. And on top of that, Roman put him through a table outside and left him for dead. Okay, whoop de doo So, like, the official explanation for all of this is, well, we didn't beat Randy, and we didn't beat Drew, so now we can do matches over the summer. I was like, who could possibly care? Like, the I love Randy Orton, I love Drew McIntyre, but bro, these guys can't even beat Roman Reigns. What, they hit their move on him, which led to him beating Riddle? So... I mean, you know, we've been talking about this. Remember when he stacked Daniel Bryan and he st- stacked him like cordwood? Remember that? And he's just beating everybody. He's got no viable challengers. I thought at the very least, especially if this match is going on last, at the very least we can create a viable challenger. No. He beat Riddle. Anyway, back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, very quickly here, then we'll get Mike's thoughts on this show. He's suffering from an illness, as am I. <laughs> Congested, headache. It's been it's a hard week out now. Here. Really? God. Yeah, you got. if you just got it, you're in trouble, brother. I'm hoping it's just because of the nor'easter that blew through this weekend with the 15, 16, 70 mile per hour winds and the, the nope, massive temperature sick. drop. But hopefully that'll be it, and it doesn't linger on like yours has for the last week and something. All right, so... Uh, as noted, main event, it was an excellent tag match, six-man tag, but uh, I did not get the finish at all. And then I was even more baffled because Ronda Rousey, in the only championship match on the show, Ronda Rousey beat Charlotte Flair, I quit match, uh, anything goes, it was just a wild, crazy brawl, and it was awesome, and she won the SmackDown women's title, and uh, I know Dave said that Perhaps there was a danger of fans walking out after the Roman match if it had gone on earlier. Bro, if that's the case, they got big problems. But uh, I cannot figure out why that Ronda Rousey-Charlotte Flair match was not the main event. Title change, Ronda Rousey, babyface win, great match. I was, like, baffled. But, uh, yeah, Ronda won, broke the arm of uh, Charlotte Flair. And uh, Charlotte's going to be taking some time off. Her and Andrade are getting married. So they're going to get married. They're going to go on a honeymoon. And uh, she'll be out of action as a result of this broken arm until then. Madcap beat Happy Corbin. This match should have been on SmackDown. We didn't need it. It was boring. They, they still, in 2022, do this buffer match gimmick. And it did nothing but bring the show down. And it was not needed. Edge and AJ was a good match. Finish was stupid. I realize the stand-up for WWE blokes are playing their semantics game, but Damien Priest was barred from ringside, so he came out anyway, but only stood at the end of the aisle. Not the end by the the thing, but like all the way down to the end of the aisle, because he wasn't at ringside. And then Finn Balor attacked him and threw him in the ring. So they're brawling inside the ring in front of the referee, Damien Priest. Not a disqualification. And then a... A hooded figure cost AJ the match. It was Rhea Ripley. She has joined Judgment Day. Good match. I wouldn't call it a great match, but it was good. Omos and Bobby Lashley was, uh, I would give it one star, which would make it the best match Omos has ever had. He was horrible in this match. God bless the guy. He was horrible. MVP, when MVP said that he was better than the great Kali, like, God bless MVP. I'm a big fan of MVP and everything like that. But, brother, he ain't better than the great Collie. He's not, okay? He's more mobile, but, like, he can't sell to save his life. He has two moves, which, by the way, I found out he's being trained by Kevin Nash, and so you'll never guess what his two moves are. I'm not making this up. A snake eyes and a big boot. He has no other moves. And uh, Bobby Lashley, I mean, this bloke did everything 
to try to make a good match with Omos. And well, he's going to have to grow his hair out if he wants to do the uh, the flip of the hair, which was one of Kevin Nash's what six moves that he was always. <laughs> Dude, Nash Nash works uh, like rings to this day. He would work <laughs> rings around Omos. Oh, absolutely. And then uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins was the opener, and uh, it's a very good opener. I don't think it was as good as WrestleMania, but it was a very good match. Cody Rhodes won again. Seth Rollins tried to pin him using the tights, and uh, Cody reversed it and pulled the tights, which was not a heel finish. If you watch the match, it was clearly the babyface giving the heel his just desserts. And so Cody wins again. So there's there's two things that could happen here based on this finish. One, we're doing a third match, okay? So if we do a third match, Cody does not need to lose this match. So that would be that would require Seth to lose three times in a row. I don't think that's happening. And so I think that they did this finish because they weren't doing a 50-50 feud and they wanted to save face at least a little bit with Seth Rollins. And so he got his tights pulled for the finish. But uh, he lost two times in a row. So unless they do like a Hell in a Cell match or something like that, which imagine doing a Hell in a Cell match over... He pulled my trousers. Well. So I, uh, I don't think so. By the way, Hell in a Cell is June uh, 5th or something like that. <laughs> After this show, I got no idea what's on that Hell in a Cell. They built nothing for that show. So there you go. Do you really think that it matters in the world of WWE if Seth Rollins loses to Cody Rhodes for a third straight time if the match is good? Hey. I mean, honestly, I think in he most should. places. should. Cody Cody needs to face Roman Reigns for the title. He needs to do no jobs, okay? No. None. No. I agree with that 100%. It's just a matter of when you plan on doing that match and what you plan on. That's what's interesting is they don't have a lot of names up top. You know, Cody and Seth are fantastic together. You got Roman, but as you mentioned, no opponents for those guys. And I don't know. I, I, you know, there need to be other names in that mix for, for a variety of reasons, much less because you need to build new stars. And it's like, you know, do you plan on bringing Braun Breaker up? Doesn't seem like they are, at least not anytime soon. So it's like, where are your threats? What are your, where are your big threats to Roman Reigns? Where are your big threats to anybody? I don't know, but if you want to head to uh, SI.com Sports Illustrated, my newest article is up right now, which is in fact a recap of WrestleMania Backlash. And uh, you can read what I just told you right here. Did they give you a word count? No, of course not. Or did they just say freestyle Brian Alvarez? You're the man. It's always freestyle Brian Alvarez. Except when I used to write for Penthouse Magazine. That was the worst job of my life. Oh, for the money you got? Are you sure about that? Uh, Dude, I got $1,000 a column. Like, it was good, but it wasn't good enough for the pain and suffering and misery. (laughs) I mean, dude. Think about this. I was like, I was like in my early twenties, and I got a free subscription to Penthouse. It wasn't worth it. That's how much it was just misery writing these columns. <laughs> Bob Guccione just personally sending you. A... Well, I don't think it was Bob, <laughs> but I knew though. I do know that Granny went down to the gas station. She bought Penthouse magazine so she could read my column. Did she really? Yeah. Did she also pick up a hustler to jugs too while she was at I it? I don't know. Just... I don't know what else she got, but uh, she did that. <laughs> Oh my God! Did you? You couldn't even have cut it out for her. You? She actually bought the entire. I didn't. Magazine. I didn't make her. She just did it. It's called having a fan, Mike. Something you know nothing about. Well, I mean, you can have a fan, but I don't know if I want my grandmother, you know, jumping on the penthouse to. Uh, well, what am I going to do? She talk uh, about anything uh, else? Lock her keys somewhere so she can't get in the car and drive down and <laughs> be an independent individual and make up her own mind and her own choices. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this show? No, it was actually a good show. I thought it was a good show for what it was because of the matches that were on there. Cody and Seth have a great rapport together, and I know people have no idea what Seth Rollins is. I don't know what Seth Rollins' character is. And I think at this point, that's the character, is he's just this goofy guy. But he and Cody together are fantastic because physically, there's not much Seth Rollins can't do. And it's you know I'm not trying to throw Cody under the bus there. But I mean, my God, Seth is fantastic physically. Almost and Bobby Lashley... You know, it is what it is. At some point, I'd like to see Bobby Lashley, I guess. Jackhammer, almost. I don't know how you finish this feud. I don't know how you, you know, you get over on almost. But 
almost Giant Silva, El Gigante, all of these guys, I will never understand. I get it with pro wrestling. If you have a Don Leo Jonathan, if you have a young Andre the Giant, if you have guys like that who physically can actually work, that's one thing. But to get these massive giants and to want them to work instead of just power bombing people and choke slamming people, I'll never understand that. And I don't see how they're doing almost any good. Frankly, is anything other than a 911 type of character. Edge, we'll have to see where it goes, and I guess tonight will be the first step there with Rhea Ripley and how she's going to play into things. I actually kind of like that because, again, if you want to shift Edge or Damian Priest into a title situation against somebody, you know, Rhea Ripley and somebody, whether it be Ronda or whoever, you know, again, I, I think that's probably, you know, that's a good thing. Having Ronda, having, uh, I'm sorry, having Rhea Ripley and having, um, uh, Bianca Belair, they're by far the most important parts of your company for the future. You have women stars now with Becky and, and Rhonda and, and Charlotte. And obviously, you know, at some point, Bailey's coming back. You still have Sasha, who people will take to if you decide to push her again, you know, at a different level. But they really need to really crank it up with Rhea and Bianca because how long ago was Rhea in that match with Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania? It's been like, what, three years now, two years now, whatever it's been. And, you know, she should really be. At least their intention should be to get her right where Bianca is right now and to try to keep her at that level and try to keep them even. A couple of other notes here. We'll do some feedback after the break. So uh, for all of my friends that enjoy NXT 2.0, tomorrow night just announced out of the blue, because of course they did. It's Natty and Cora Jade. They started this storyline like a few weeks ago, and they were building it up like the ultimate match for Cora Jade. Like, you know, she's going to have to go through this person, that person, and build up this and build up that. Nope. We're just doing it on TV tomorrow. So if you're excited for that match, that's your that's your chance. And then uh, also, just uh, out of nowhere, they're already doing it. Gigi Dolan and JC Jane against Wendy Chu and Roxanne Perez. All right. El- Elbow Fire. According to the uh, closed captioning, <laughs> elbow fire, which sounds like a serious medical issue. Maybe not serious, but definitely a medical issue. <laughs> I've actually had elbow fire now that I think about it. I had, uh, I had tendonitis right uh, here in this little gimmick. The tennis elbow? Uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, it hurt for years. Like, it took forever for that to heal. So, uh there's Did that. you do any physical therapy, or was it just your incredible recuperative powers? That oh yeah, my incredible recuperative powers, where it took three years for that thing to feel better. <laughs> and then uh, the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament begins. I am excited for NXT tomorrow. I can't wait. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Com. If you want to send in your feedback, four two five seven eight zero seven five six six. Bret Hart says he would love to be a part of AEW, but for right now, he is happy being at home. Speaking to Lucha Libre Online, 64-year-old says he wants to be remembered as a wrestler and not as a manager or in another role. He also said right now he's making up for lost time after having spent 30 years on the road. I'm mostly making up for a lot of lost time, staying home as much as I can, trying to make up for all the lost time for being gone all the time for 30 years. I'm happily retired. I'm a home guy now. There's not a lot I can do in wrestling. What would I do? Referee, manage, be a chairman? I don't want to be remembered that way. I want to be remembered as a wrestler. I do think it would be nice if uh, he was somehow able to show up for the finals of the Owen Hart Cup, uh, present the cup to the winners. But uh, it certainly doesn't make it seem like that's going to happen. But I guess we'll no. find out here in a few weeks. And again, I still think that's not essential when you have Martha and her family there. I mean, that's what it's really about. It would be nice, I guess, to have that, you know, a full presence of the family there. But I still don't think it's that necessary. I know some people are going to jump on that probably as it gets closer to the time of it happening. But, uh, you know, really, it's, it comes down to Martha and her kids. This is about Owen. It's not about the whole Hart family. WWE Hall of Famer, Sonny. Tammy Sitch has been bailed out of jail following her arrest in relation to a fatal car crash. Court records show she was bailed out of jail at 1214 Eastern on Sunday. A $227,500 surety bond was posted by a Florida bail bondsman service. She was arrested Friday, facing nine charges relating to a March 25th car accident 
where a 75-year-old man was killed. Prior to her being arrested, police suspected a uh, sitch of a DUI in the crash. We're waiting for toxicology reports to come back. She faces the following charges. DUI, causing the death of a human or unborn child. Driving with a suspended or revoked license and causing death or serious injury. Seven counts of DUI with damage to person or property. So it sounds to me like those toxicology reports came back. And, of course, we've got the press release about the situation there. The estate has filed a lawsuit against Sitch and her boyfriend, James Penty. She's been arrested for driving under the influence at least six times prior to this most recent arrest. Not good. It's wild. Absolutely wild. And I guess I don't know what this 10 percent. So somebody had to pay twenty two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars to get her out of uh, out of jail for this. It's just amazing. She's able to walk around with the track record that she has with the fact that she is driving and cannot help herself but to drive and to drive hammered uh, whether she's got a license or not. So. You know, I don't know how these things work as far as how long you could have kept her in there for. I guess you got to give her some bail, but it is amazing that it was Actually, not you don't higher. have to give bail. There's many people that are locked up without bail. One being Cain oh, Velasquez, true. actually. Well, that is, that's true, but it's also a different story here, too. We don't want to, you know, meld all these together here. But when you have a record in, in the way that she does and... Again, you know, she's a menace. She's a literal menace. And obviously now she's... <laughs> Um, alleged to be a killer. Let's just put it like that, you know? And I just, again, when somebody can't help themselves, you actually have to protect people from themselves and protect other people from this person who, if you told me today, Brian, we got a report that we're talking about tomorrow that she got back in a car and was drunk and did something, I mean, I wouldn't fall over shocked at all. I mean, that's all she does. So it's a terrible situation, and hopefully justice prevails for that man and that family. All righty. After being pulled from the world on GCW in New York City the last minute due to his age, Nick Wayne was asked by Joey Janelle on Twitter to call his shot for a match at spring break. Nick Wayne replied, Will Ospreay. But it did not happen. However, <laughs> June 19th, Providence, Rhode Island, GCW's New England debut. It will be Nick Wayne versus Will Ospreay. It's Nick's idol. This would be like if I were 16 years old getting signed to a match with, like, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, yeah. My God. <laughs> it's crazy. How He's did this crazy. kid sleep last night? He's got school today. <laughs> Literally. I need to talk to his mother. He is a... Uh... I mean, a physical wonder, obviously. Everybody that's seen him, you know, he's obviously got great physical gifts as far as his size for his age. But how he's able to control his body, you know, he is a he is certainly a natural third generation, <laughs> third generation superstar. And, you know, he and Will Ospreay, I, 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 I'm, I'm very happy for him. There are very few people who get to have this level of success and have this level of shine on them so early in their career, especially for a guy who, I mean, how old was Buddy when Nick passed away? He was very, very young. And the fact that he's been able to stay in this business and being able to build himself up, and it shows you the kind of respect that Buddy had, too, where there's so many people that have their eyes out on this kid and are looking out for him. I wouldn't suggest a 16, 15-year-old get involved in pro wrestling. I absolutely wouldn't. But when it comes to Nick Wayne, you look at the situation, you see the people around him that are taking care of him and have their eyes out for him. And they're trying to have their eyes out for his mother and keeping her happy as well, too. I mean, it's just it's an amazing situation. If his body holds up together, Don't cross his mother, do not cross his mother. No, <laughs> but, do you it. know, it, if his body holds up, I mean, my God, we're talking about. But 40 years, possibly, that this guy could have in the business. So it's just it's an amazing thing. So uh, I was watching SmackDown, and uh, I'll do the full review with old filthy Tom Lawler. But uh, I don't know what's going on. How many times have I talked about WWE and I just say, I don't know what's going on? <laughs> so you know they've done this thing with Lacey Evans, and like every week they've got the Lacey Evans story. And uh, I, I, was, I was actually, I thought it was awesome the first week. thought it was awesome the second week. Thought it was awesome the third week. And then I did I did get irritated on week four. Why? Because she has a real story. And it's clearly very hard for her to tell her story. And when she tells her story on TV, it is very compelling. 
and it makes her come off as a super baby face. And uh, it took, it literally took until the fourth time they did this for me to notice that they sandwich the reality with their branding. Okay. Everyone, I realize everyone's, you know, I realized everyone ended with the same catchphrase, which is, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm better than the other women in the locker room, but they damn sure aren't better than me. And I, you know, the first couple times I was like, all right, well, they're kind of adding this catchphrase. That's everything. That's cool like that. But by the time they do the fourth time, I noticed that they also were branding the beginning. She has to begin the story with, all right, here we go. Everyone. Yeah. Like, I understand the first time, because it's like, man, let's take a deep breath and then tell the story. But literally, that's now part of the branding. She has to take a deep breath and go, all right, here we go. So anyway, I, I it was kind of like, God, can you just let her tell her story without adding your branding to this real story of tragedy in her life? So anyway, they do the fifth one. And in fact, it starts out with, all right, here we go. And then she launches into her story. And uh, this one, this one's talking about, like, drug overdoses, deaths, and suicides. So this is a super heavy one. And then she ends with her catchphrase again. And, uh, you know, she's crying and everything like that. And, and uh, so then, when it's over, they go down to, uh, to the ring. And the ring announcer, she's going to bring Lacey Evans in front of the crowd. And I don't remember the exact words, but it was something like, Lacey Evan asks that you stand and show her the proper respect. <laughs> they introduced her, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on a second. Lacey Evans requests that we stand and show her the proper respect. So I was... <laughs> And then, but she came out and like she waves and she's hugging people and everyone's, and they actually stood and showed her the proper respect. They're cheering and everything like that. But like, then she goes to the back and I thought, what in the hell did I just see? <laughs> what did I just see? Don't even tell me. Don't even tell me that five weeks of a true story of, of abuse, drug usage, overdoses, suicide, don't even tell me that this is their plan to bring her back as a heel. I can't believe this one. I know. I know what you're all saying. Why can't you believe this, Brian? Why are you so dumb? No, I can't on this one. I can't. There's no way. This had to just be incompetence where they were like, oh, make sure that, you know, the fans are just really nice for this one because you just did these five... It's got to be, it's, this has to think, be incompetence and she's coming back as a baby face. Do you think it was on the ring announcer? Do you think maybe she was, you know, they, they, look, we it has to, get to be, respect. it, it has, has to, be. to be, that's what I'm saying. There's no saying. way, there's no way that these five weeks of storytelling was to bring her back as a heel. It's impossible. This one is actually impossible. <laughs> oh my. She's another one. Figure it and look, I don't know. <laughs> No, Brian, it's not on me, everybody. It is not on me. Look, it's not my fault. It's not on me. Let's be honest here, okay? Do you think she's going to remain a baby face? I mean, I don't know, six months or from by now the or end, whatever. That's the thing, but by you the end don't of the do year. five <laughs> weeks of heart-wrenching stories that, as I was noted when people were emailing me, like they were all starting with, this is a trigger warning. You don't do that to bring somebody back as a heel. You don't, okay? <laughs> this one is not just, this is, that's wrong, okay? <laughs> that actually is objectively wrong. You Maybe do not new, do that. Her new gimmick will be trauma porn. That's uh... <laughs> No, no, Dagan, it's not incompetence. This goes far beyond that. This is not typical WWE incompetence. There's no. there's no way that she's coming back as a heel. I can't. I can't do this job anymore. <laughs> I got to quit. I'm going to be like Roman Reigns. So I want to thank all of you listening right now and watching on uh, on YouTube and, and Twitch. But, like, you may not see me again. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Oh, man. No, it is not falling for it. This is not falling for it, okay? Having, like, an actual, like, a, a human soul 
It's not falling for it. It's called being a human. Okay? No human uh, does what they did for five weeks with the intention of having her be a heel. No. Okay? No. This is not typical WWE. Oh, my God. I can't believe that Roman Reigns pin. This is different. Okay? It's different. Well, it Kurt is a new Angle, phase uh, of my life. Remember with Kurt Angle, they did start him doing the three eyes thing. They thought he was going to be a true baby face, came in against Tiger Ali Singh and all that sort of stuff. And then what they found out was as he kept doing it, it kept getting heat. So then it became just double down on it, triple down on it, really rub in the fact that these three eyes. But uh, a completely different scenario than what they're doing with Lacey Evans. And here's the other thing. Who are the baby faces on in the heels on that side of the roster? You got, you know, Ronda now is your champion. Charlotte's going to be going away. You have, what, Sasha and Naomi, who are baby faces. I mean, I would hate to say it, but I, I hope that that's not going to be the, the case, although I can absolutely see it later on down the line that she is going to be a heel. And to be honest with you, too, once these vignettes are over, and I have a feeling that once things kind of like level out and some time goes by, the same people that were booing her before are going to be right back to booing her. I think she's got a... Some of the people are going to love her because of her character and the real life things that she's been through in the military and all that stuff. And there are going to be other people that hold that against her. So I don't think it's forever, brother. Back in a moment, it's never alive. It's almost over. Don't worry. I almost just left and had you finish the show. <laughs> They're on you, aren't they? Is it Dagan? No, I'm not talking about the chat at all. I'm talking about no. WWE. I don't care about oh, the well. chat. I'm talking about WWE. <laughs> it had to be a mistake. And I am of the impression. I'm not of the impression. I believe because I'm a, I'm a human being with a heart and a soul. That on, su and on this coming Friday night, Lacey Evans is going to be a baby face. I believe that. Well, she will, but what's going to happen a couple of weeks from now? I don't care about a couple of weeks from now, mm, but she should. needs to be a baby face coming off these vignettes. She could turn heel later. Who cares? But God. <laughs> I think she's going to be a baby face. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Anybody else? <laughs> Can you believe like after everything they've here. done to build her Hold up as a here. sympathetic baby face? WWE's going to make late. She, they can't. Not now. Later. But not coming off those vignettes. Yeah, Botchamania just uh, retweeted somebody. I noticed during the recap of Corbin vs. Moss, they used crowd shots from 10 years ago. I know they manipulate the crowds in the recaps, but a 10-year difference. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, apparently. Oh, the 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 yeah, there was there was footage on the pay per view. You guys you guys crying about uh, uh, piped in crowd noise? Okay, <laughs> like I've been watching that forever, but it is new that you would take a clip from a show ten years ago and insert it into a modern show. <laughs> Somebody with their Bruno foam finger and the <laughs> hey, listen, Hulk listen, rules. everybody, bros. <laughs> Why are you mad? It's part of the entertainment portion of the show. It's like the fake attendance. It's like the fake crowd noise. Now we get fake fans. <laughs> I'm out of here. Wrestling Observer Live.